What's up guys, it's JZNES back again with another video. Today here we are to talk about Scott Pilgrim. Uh, we're finally going to review my second favorite movie of all time, Scott Pilgrim uh, vs. the World. But no, we're not doing that. We're actually just reviewing the game Scott Pilgrim vs. the World based on said movie uh, by Edgar Wright. He directed it or whatnot, you know, so great adaptation of the books, the classic Scott Pilgrim books. Um, so yeah. And, you know, of course, you can see I've got all the originals and I've got all of the colorized versions here. And, and Scott Pilgrim's like one of these great things from my uh, my years, 20s, I guess you can say. I mean, it wasn't 20 in 2010, but like probably like later teen years to 20s, I discovered Scott Pilgrim. We, we saw the movie in 2010. How old would I have been in 2010? Like, yeah, anyway, point is. You know, so we went and saw this movie. Uh, originally, I wasn't a big fan of said movie, but it grew on me, and then it really became something uh, pretty awesome to me. You know, all the video game references, the, the cool music stuff, the, just the fast-paced directing was great with the movie. I, I just really enjoyed the characters and the story. You know, Scott and Ramona, and, and then all the side characters were great. And so, uh, you know, the movie was a big kind of hit um, after a little bit there. It kind of caught on. Um, I can't remember if it did well to begin with, but later on it definitely became a, a big hit. Um, so they made a game to tie in with said movie, and uh, that's the game we're reviewing today. It's uh, kind of like a sprite-based, like 16-bit almost, like maybe 32-bit like style beat-em-up game. Uh, and uh, it follows a lot of the scenes from the books and the movies and takes kind of inspiration from both and does a lot to um, really tie it all together and and because because the like other you, you see all this stuff but it's like despite all of this the franchise uh, really isn't that big it's just the movie the game uh, the game and then these books here so these, these comics they're like a you know comic books but anyway uh yeah so they're written by brian Re Bleh, brian lee o'malley he did uh lost at sea which is another great great book that he did and then he did seconds uh which is another book and then uh, the comics both of them so yeah but he made scott pilgrim i i like uh the humor obviously and scott pilgrim is great too and that's there's a lot of quotable lines and jokes and stuff you can make uh but the game itself was like this uh, this great game that came out at the time, uh, beat 'em up game. And then you know a couple years down the line, they they took it all off of the digital front. And they never released a physical uh, version of this, so um, it was lost. It was lost media for a long time, and and the fans pushed to get it brought back. Um, but it was all the licensing stuff that they didn't want to do. And the creator, Brian Leo Valley, was like, oh yeah, I'd love to get the game out there again. And he just couldn't couldn't get it out there again. So, because of all the legal stuff and all the copyrights and all that. So, in 2020, for the 10th anniversary of the movie, they uh, announced that they were going to be bringing the game back. And so now you can get it again uh, on digital storefronts for now. Um, but... You can also get, you could have also gotten, at one point, a physical version of the game, the uh, complete edition here. You can see I got the PS4 version. I actually played the Switch version for this review, and uh, and it's also a multiplayer game, so I did play it with my friends. Uh, I didn't beat it with my friends, but we got most of the way through the game. Um, all together and then I, of course I got this giant limited edition here which I'll show off in a little bit here but yeah I, I'm a really big fan of Scott Pilgrim I really love uh, everything Scott Pilgrim related so I had to get the physical editions and when I saw there was a giant collector's edition I'm like all right it's Scott Pilgrim I gotta get it you know it's never gonna come out again um, and this this is done by limited run games who just released like indie games and stuff uh, once as a limited run hence the name and that's it and then you can't get it again so you know now now you couldn't you can't get it um 
So yeah, so now I have it physically in case it ever goes away again, which it probably will at some point. So, but it's, it was this great game that just kind of got um, thrown into the lost media circuit and, and uh, they finally re-released it and that was kind of a really significant thing for the game. Um, yeah, and, and it came with, I, I, I got this t-shirt, it didn't come with the t-shirt or what I'm about to show off, but um, I, I had to buy them because, you know, I had to because I'm a huge fan. It also came with this, or, or you know, I got this hoodie, um, which you can see it's got all the evil X's there, there we go, um, and Scott Pilgrim, which is awesome. Uh, but my problem is, that's all on the back, so I can never see any of that. I can only see the front, which, you know, is still cool. It has the Sex Spa Bomb logo. Um, but, you know, it's not as cool as, uh, that fucking back there. So, yeah. So, Scott Pilgrim, you know. Alright, so let's, uh, let's talk about the game, I guess. Uh, the game is a side-scrolling beat-em-up game which you can get four players in. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but it kind of follows the events of the the movie and the books, um, which are about this guy, Scott Pilgrim, who has to uh, fight Ramona Flowers, uh, seven evil exes. Um, and, you know, it's like a minor spoiler, but I, I hope you've read or experienced Scott Pilgrim in some fashion by now but you know she keeps saying seven evil exes and he's like why do you keep saying that and then she's you know then uh Mae Whitman in the movie fucking Amity Katara you know like one of the best voice actresses of our childhood and, and I guess our adulthoods now because Owl House uh you know comes out of nowhere and she's like this ninja girl and she's like the fourth evil ex and you're like oh wait he's like you had a sexy phase and she's like yeah you know I didn't think it would count or whatever and, uh, so it's cool. So it's, yeah, like, even some, like, lesbian representation there. That's kind of cool, even though it was, like, you know, just by curious but it's something. It's representation nonetheless, uh, which is pretty cool. And, uh, actually in the game, uh, spoilers, I guess, for the game as well. Um, in the game, which is cool, and I think maybe in the books, I don't really remember the ending to the books as well, but in the, the, they don't, really touch on this at all in the movie as far as i know um but in in the whole storyline there's this other girl that is dating before ramona uh knives chow she's chinese um that's, that's a line from the movie anyway and uh yeah so he's dating her and uh him and or er, i'm sorry uh Knives Chow and Kim, who's one of Scott Pilgrim's friends, uh, actually kind of end up together in the game, which is uh, pretty cool. And even one of the uh, the recovery moves in the game is Knives coming out of nowhere and uh, giving Kim a kiss, and then that, that recovers health or whatever, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's uh, it's, it's good like representation there, and I kind of wish that had been in the the movie or if it wasn't in the books it should have been in the books because i think that's actually they're great together as well um because at the end you know knives kind of goes off in her own direction and she's like oh yeah you know you can be with uh ramona because you two are kind of made to be together or whatnot and so um yeah they get to, you know but but then but then you feel bad for knives because you're like oh well then now she doesn't have anybody but you know, in this scenario, then Knives and Kim get together. It's like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool, so. Yeah, so, um. But, okay, so, like, you get all the main characters in the game. So, you get, you can play as, uh, Scott. You can play as Ramona, um, who's the one I played as most. Um, you can play as Kim. You can play as, uh, Steven Stills, and then Knives, and, uh, Knives and uh, Wallace, I think, are the DLC characters. Um, Wallace is his gay roommate, and, and Stephen Stills is one of the members in the band or whatever. Which is kind of weird. I, I mean, I guess, because... So that's the point. Like, uh, he's got his whole band there. Um, Kim, and then Stephen Stills, and then... Uh, yeah, so that would make sense, actually. Stephen Stills, he's the talent. Um, 
<laughs> anyway, so, yeah. Um, so those are the main playable characters. They all kind of play similarly, but they all have, like, their own little gimmicks. Um, Ramona has her giant hammer, which is awesome. And it's part of why I play as her. She also has a move where she can, like, spit around with her purse, and that's pretty helpful. Um, I like her the most, I think. That's that's definitely the, the character that I played as the most. Um, I leveled her up first to, to max level. They have a leveling system in this game. It basically just teaches you new moves as you go along, which is pretty good. But what's interesting is... Um, so there's, like eight levels in the game or whatever um broken up into like certain stages or whatnot and so um uh yeah so anyway um the eight levels bro broke up into different stages and then so they're all based on like one of the the x's or like level six or something is based on nega scott uh who's like a like a shadow scott you know like you, you think shadow uh link from zelda it's kind of like that um so there's a whole level with him too but anyway um and and one of the, one of the levels is level five is like the two uh twins so that's that's kind of like why there's only like eight levels but there, or like seven seven or eight levels but like there's one for e each evil x or whatnot and then there's, but the two twins are in the one level, so Nega Scott gets his level. You see what I'm saying? So it balances out to like seven or eight levels. Eight, eight I think, is because then you go to the Chaos Theater, um, or whatever. Anyway, point being that they kind of have representation for all of the evil X's, and they all kind of have their own space and their own level, which is cool. They're all kind of based on scenes from the the book and the movies. Um, you know, so if, like, for instance, you, the first, the first one is, like, you, you're kind of just in, like, the suburbs of, of, uh, like, Canada there, I guess, Ontario or something, or Toronto, that's what it is, Toronto, um, yeah, so, you're, you're there, and then, you, at the end, you go to the, you make your way to the, um, the rocket, right? Isn't that the place where they they um where they fight the first? They in the movie, like he just kind of comes out of nowhere and, and uh, you know, Matthew Patel, I'm Ramona's first evil ex boyfriend. You know, like, um, did you get my memo explaining the situation? I skimmed it. Ooh, you will pay for your insolence, yo. Great, it's so quotable. It's such a great movie. If you haven't seen Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, I know people are like, oh, it's in Age World, there's bad lines in it. It's like, yeah, okay, fine, but like the movie's still really good. It's still fucking really good, okay? It's hilarious. I could put that on any day that I'm like feeling kind of shitty, and that movie will get me in a great mood, so. Um, mark of a, of a true classic right there. Um, anyway. So, you know, you fight him. He's not that hard. And then you get to the second level and the cycle continues. You know, you go and fight Lucas Lee, uh, you know, played by Chris Evans in the movie, which is pretty crazy. There's a lot of, like, big names in the movie, too. It's like, you know, you have, like, Michael Sarah, and then um, Chris Evans was in there. It was the, you know, like, Mae Whitman. I guess she's not, like, that big of a name. But, but like, to me, that's a pretty cool person to be in there. Um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of good people in there. Anyway, um, yeah, it just kind of continues on like that. You fight all the evil, you get the point. Point, point being that they represented the atmosphere of the, the thing looks really good and it all represents, uh, Scott Pilgrim really well. Uh, like some of the enemy choices are kind of weird, like, um, especially in the, the Nega Scott level, you're like in a park. And he's like, fucking, the worst enemy in the entire game. And you would think, uh, it's like some robot or something. No, no, no. It's these, like, fucking owls. Just, like, owls. Just, like, because they're, they're so high up that you, like, and then they, like, dive bomb you. And then they're just off the screen. And they're so hard to, like, get. And you have to attack them and destroy them to, like, move on with the level. Uh, so these fucking owls are, the, are like, the worst enemies. And, uh, I always hated fighting them in that level. <laughs> it didn't take me that long. The game isn't, like, super hard. But it can be challenging if you don't like um, 
use the power-ups and whatnot. I was talking about the leveling system earlier, and so you, like, level up to get new moves and stuff, but also, uh, you get money throughout the game by defeating the enemies, and, um, there's, uh, secrets and, like, shops in the game. Um, I don't know if there's shops in every level, but there's shops definitely in the first level is, like, where most of the shops are. You can, like, go into them and you can buy different stuff. Um, but one that's really helpful is there's a secret shop at the end of the first level, um, and if you go in there, you'll find, like, this one that'll give you, like, a bunch of power-ups to, like, your attack and, and defense and guts and, like, all that kind of stuff. And then you have, like, heart points and stuff and, like, um, so yeah, it, it, there's a lot, a lot of different little items. It's very River City Ransom-esque where you can, like, buy items to kind of upgrade your, your skill set there. So, um, some players will take that as to grind and, and make some good money off of that and like go and, and, and buy a bunch of power-ups and stuff and uh you know that's cool you, you can't really blame people for doing that i, I kind of did that just to level up um ramona and then also kim but the way the the levels themselves work is that every character has to be up to that point uh so, like, if I wanted to go to level 4, if I was playing as Ramona and Kim, if I had, like, a second player, we could only do level 1 until we progressed to level 4. Or, if I was solo playing as Kim or Ramona, if we're both at level 4, I think then you can both go to level 4. Um, so, like, every character has to beat every level in order to be able to have them go there in the multiplayer if you have extra characters. So, it, it's interesting. It's like you either kind of play the game uh, yourself a bunch of times to unlock all the characters and get up through all the levels, or you would play the game with your friends and you could get a lot more characters through at the same time, but in that case there's going to be a lot more enemies and it'll take you a lot longer. I remember playing some of the later levels solo and I'm like, oh, these aren't that hard, but when then then when you're playing with your friends, it's like, man, this takes a long time. This is a lot of enemies. So, yeah. It's interesting. Um, for the most part, the level design is pretty good. I would say that there's there's a lot of good hidden secrets around, and they'll lead you to the subspace levels where you can, like, get some money, and there's a bunch of, like, flying piggy banks and stuff that you can hit, and it'll shower down coins, which is important, you know, obviously to level up or whatnot. Uh, your your skills, but um, but yeah. So like, there's also this one part in level five that kind of sucks. Uh, for the most part, it's just like pretty standard level design, and there, it, like I said, there's the secrets and stuff. But in level five, there's this one part where it's like a platforming challenge, and there's like spikes and stuff, and then they do this in like level four and stuff, where you can like fall off the top of this this train. Those kind of things are kind of the more, like, okay, do we really need to do this kind of thing? Uh, but, you know, like my friend said, like, oh, okay, but it adds a little bit of challenge. It would be fine if the, the jumping was made for platforming, but it's not really made for platforming. And they expect you to do these, like, really pinpoint precise jumps uh, in that level. And, and so it's just really hard, and, and they don't really give you a break. It, it's that's That one's not fun, but the rest of it... Um, is pretty well done, and like I said, it all kind of references the the spots from the movie and the game, or in the book there, so. So that's nice. It's um, so like, atmospherically, it perfectly, like, represents Scott Pilgrim, and you would get a lot of the enemies that you would think you would get, um, like in Stage 5 again, where there's all the robots and whatnot, because the Katinagi twins, like, make robots in the book or whatever, so... That's pretty cool. There's like, um, there's like a part in stage five, like, like a mid boss or whatever, where it's like this giant robot and he's got like fists and stuff. It's, it's crazy and it's, it's awesome. Um, but then when you get to them, they're just like pushovers, you know, you, you kill them like almost right away. And it's like, yeah, they're probably tired from making all those robots or something. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so yeah, and a lot of the good humor like carries over to the game too. Um, in a lot of ways, which is pretty cool. And they have, like, the base level of the story there, which is nice. Um, it's, like, a really good adaptation 
for a video game. And, and even the art style looks very reminiscent of the books themselves, the comic books, um, which is cool. And, and you can see a lot of, like, characters in the background. There's, like, even references to, like, the main character from Persona 4 is in there. There's um, the Clash at Demon Head. There's, like, an NES game. Um, the, the band who's basically just metric, but um, it's his ex-girlfriend, Envy Adams. Um, she has this band in there. They're the band who play the metric song in the movie, which, you know, metric, that's my favorite band. I discovered them through Scott Pilgrim because of the song Black Sheep, and then uh, I started listening to their stuff, and we actually just went to see them, you know, like, a couple days ago, and they were awesome. I love them, but, um, so yeah, the, like, the band in the movie is called The Clash at Demon Head, and that's based on an NES game. Uh, the main character of the NES game, Bang, is actually in the background of, uh, I think, in, like, two scenes. There's, like, like, the party at the, in level five, and then, like, I think at the end in the Chaos Theater, he's there, too, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that, that's awesome. And then, uh, it's, like, a lot of that kind of stuff, and, and there's a lot of the, the secondary characters from the, the, the books are in the background of the levels, too, and kind of in the crowd shots and stuff, and that's pretty cool. So, yeah, pretty neat overall. Um, mechanically, the game is, is a lot of fun to play. It's your standard kind of beat-em-up stuff. Um, you have a bunch of different moves. Um, and each, like I was saying earlier, each character kind of has their own style of beat-em-up. Um, but, yeah, they're all kind of fun to play as. For the most part. I, I mean, I only played as uh, Scott, Kim, and uh, Ramona overall. Um, but, you know, I'm sure the other characters are pretty fun, too. Um, and they all have, like, pretty cool and unique, like... Um, like, what do you call them? Special attacks or whatnot. One's, like, a recovery attack, and one's, like, a... Actually, like, a damaging kind of attack, which is pretty cool. Um... So yeah, and they all kind of reference other characters to that, and like, other little things, and that, that's neat. I like that kind of stuff. But, the level-to-level -level gameplay, you know, is, is pretty much just the standard, like, beat-em-up style. Um, you know, kind of get to the end. There's, there's parts where you need to, like, grab a key and, like, throw it in a door, stuff like that. They, they vary it up a little bit. There's parts where you kind of have to speed through, um break stuff, that kind of thing, um, but it's, it's fun overall, I mean, it's not a very long game, and if it was any longer, it probably would have gotten kind of old fast, but, um, you know, for what it is, it's, it's mechanically a very good beat-em-up, uh, game there, so, probably one of the best beat-em-up games I've ever really played, and, and it's got a lot of the good, uh, multiplayer aspects to it, too, which means that you can also play it with your friends, and that's a lot of fun. And you can even play it with your friends online, uh, which is great. Um, I heard that's kind of laggy sometimes. Uh, I never really got to try it out myself. But, yeah, pretty pretty cool, you know? I like that. Um, other than that, yeah, like, graphically it looks cool. It's like a very retro style but it but it all looks it's really colorful like we were talking about that we were playing it like uh, modern games all look like not all of them but a lot of them look really drab and like uh, colorless and grays and browns and shit i'm so fucking tired of that and it not looking like who's that real we're sticking off oh, i hate that shit just, just make it look fucking colorful. That'll age a lot better, and it always looks nice. And of course, the books were colorful, and the, the movie was very stylistic and colorful. Uh, therefore, the game had to be as well, and it was. And it, it really nailed that art style, like I said earlier. Um, so yeah, and, and the music, as you've been hearing, is just fucking kick-ass, like, rockin'. It's very pulse-pounding. It, it's, it's amazing. And it really, it's really catchy, and it really fits the vibe of each level, like, super well. Um. So, I, li I really like that. I don't even know. Oh, this is, like, the end, like, where you're fighting Gideon. Um. And, like, uh, 
Like, most of the boss fights are pretty standard, but, like, when you get to the end, and then, like, Gideon comes out of... Like, so you fight Gideon at the Chaos Theater, it's just him, and you're like, okay, whatever. That's that's probably, like, phase one of the final boss, and then you go into the subspace, and then he's there. He comes out as this, like, giant Persona God monster, like, maybe Final Fantasy VII shit. I don't know. Like, they're not Final Fantasy... It's Final Fantasy seven or six. That has like the giant god. I think it's six. Yeah, it would be six, like with Kefka and all that. He's like this giant, like angelic god character, and he's got like all the other evil exes like under him, um, which is crazy. And then I noticed, like before you go in to fight him, sitting there on the cloud is the sword, the power of love sword that Scott like pulls out. Uh, and then you know, of course, he gets the power of self respect later on, um, and a second attempt there, but like. Oh my god, like, the sword is there and you can bring it into the battle. It sucks because you, you, it does like super great damage, but like, um, they keep knocking it off of you because projectiles keep hitting you, which is kind of annoying. Oh, there, yes, yeah, so you can pick up items, uh, in this game, like weapons and stuff. So there's like a katana earlier in the game. There's like, you know, all sorts of like trash cans and shit like that you can pick up. Um, and those are always fun to like throw at enemies and stuff. The best part is you can pick up enemies and throw them at other enemies or beat up other enemies with enemies, which is awesome. Um, yeah, like for that, like the katana is like one of the better um, items and, and stuff like that. The bats and stuff, those are always fun to use. So it's always fun to pick up stuff and throw them at the enemies and beat them up and stuff. But anyway, you can get the sword at the end there and I thought oh this is so cool and then fucking you beat that and then you realize um he like he like zooms out and he, he, they're pulling a Mega Man 2 where it, like you know like Wily is um is like it's like a projection or whatever the alien thing in Mega Man 2 and I was just like oh my god they're fucking pulling a Mega Man 2 here and then like yeah so that was pretty crazy um but yeah and, and, and I thought it was cool because I was playing as Ramona, so I thought it was cool how, like, really, she should have been the one to beat up Gideon. In the, in the, in the movie, she's just fighting knives, which is kind of, like, unearned because they don't really, like, know each other that much. Like, it's fine, but, like, Scott's the one fighting Gideon. It's, it's almost like Ramona should fight for herself. I think that's that's even better. That's, it's almost way better, actually. If, if Ramona fights the final evil ex herself, I get that Scott Pilgrim's the main character, and if he doesn't fight... They can fight together. Wouldn't that be a great, like, message if they fought together and then, like, they're like, okay, we, we can defeat our past trauma together or some shit like that. That'd be pretty good. I like that, actually. Um, so they they kind of did fight him together, honestly, in, in the movie. But, like, um, but yeah, like, Ramona d definitely deserves to beat up Gideon, so, um, so that's cool. So it was kind of nice to see her defeating this, like, god Gideon thing, and then, like, all the evil exes are in there, so it's almost very symbolic, um, but yeah, um, so yeah, it was, it was good, it, it was a good ending, and I really enjoyed it, and I'm really glad I finally, uh, beat the game, you know, it's, it's been a while, uh, of playing it on and off here and there, um, but it's a, it's a really enjoyable game, and it's really not even that long. So, yeah, I'm really glad I beat it. Uh, so, Scott Pilgrim, the, the game, let's see, I'm going to give... The, the graphics were really nice looking, the colors and all that were great. The atmosphere really uh, felt, felt really nice. Um, the gameplay was really solid. The multiplayer is cool, so you can play that with your friends. That's that's really uh, where it shines, is, is playing it with your friends. You know, it's alright as a single-player game, but playing with your friends is, is a lot of fun. So I do definitely recommend uh, playing it with your friends there. And then the music's really good. Um, the character, you know, the characters are represented really well. And the, the lore of the world, like the atmosphere and stuff, is good. And it, it's a faithful adaptation to all of Scott Pilgrim. So, I, I like that, too. So, yeah. Overall, a really great game. I really recommend it. It's uh, pretty cheap on, like, the eShops now and stuff. Get it before it goes away. Again. Um, but I'll give it, like, a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, so, yeah. 
let's uh, let's take a look at what comes in the uh, the special edition here, since um since I got it. So you get this. Um, you know, it's not that on the back there, but you pull this off, and you got this like briefcase-looking thing. Now you got your, like, Universal and Ubisoft logos on the back there, along with Limited Run. And then... You open it up. And it plays music from the game. Isn't that cool? And then... Lift that up. And underneath here, we got even more stuff. So, there's these uh, drumsticks here. Uh, can you see the. You can see they're like characters from the game there. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Is that the other one? Is that the same thing? Oh, yeah, and it's got uh, Kim on the other one there. Kind of hard to tell, I know, but so you got those. Um, I got the uh, the um, keychain, so I got the Ramona one, and I got the Scott one somewhere else. Um, also, the pose here is like Sonic Adventure, so I thought that was really cool. Um, the soundtrack for Scott Pilgrim: The World versus the Game versus the World: The Game. Um, the cool like Genesis looking uh, case here which is really neat and then on the inside of that some other stuff so you get a bunch of stickers um, and whatnot and um, oh yeah there's a little thing that tells you to go uh, download the guide there, the digital version. Um, and I've got a physical version here, so that's pretty cool. Um, that that also was kind of exclusive to the, uh, to the collector edition here, so another reason I kind of wanted to uh, really, really get that was for the guide. I'm going to try to set this down a second so I can show this map. Then they give you this... Uh, physical map for the game there, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I was right, it's Toronto, yep. So that's pretty neat. And then... Uh, one more thing here. It might be something else under there, but... Oh, yeah, there's a little bit more under. Alright, uh... Oh, yeah, there's a few more things. Okay. Oops. <laughs> okay, so then you got... Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, uh... Behind the Pixels. It's, like, also... A guide... For the, uh... For the game there. Okay, I'm gonna pull these out now, so we can... Check these out in a second here. Close this guy up. All right. So. Oh well, here's the soundtrack uh, on cassette. Most people would be like, "Oh, why would you want it on cassette? Nobody is a cassette player anymore." But it's just cool to have, you know. Nice and collectible. Um, little pixel pin art there of Scott pretty neat uh, guitar pick which is pretty neat it's got the sex bob on the back there got some collectible cards there I like that one it's got Ramona there it's nice And then there's 
some cards in here. I, I don't even know if I've opened this yet, actually. I don't even know what's in here. So we have Gideon Graves. I'm assuming these are going to be the evil X's. Yep. The cat... Oops. Katanagi Twins. Oh, they all have little things. Powers. Just look at him. Powers. Being Japanese. Roxy R Richter. Richter. Like Richter Belmont. Uh, gender female. That's what it says. Um, Todd Ingram. Dating Envy Adams. Cheating on her too. Oh yeah, this is this is what they all say in the, the game when they like come up. They all have these like little splash screens like this. Um, <laughs> Lucas Lee, Powers, look him up on the web. Matthew Patel, Powers, Mystical. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, I like that. That's neat. All the evil X's there. You know, it's nothing crazy, but it's just nice to have all this kind of stuff. Um, I just really like it. Alright, so we got the the guidebook here, or whatnot. Here, let me get a little closer, see if I can't uh, kind of show it off there. That's neat. Got some good art there. This kind of tells like this, the origins of Scott Pilgrim. That's neat. This is long. I actually have to. I should definitely read this because it's pretty interesting. Concept art. There you go. That'd be cool. There's a robot I was talking about earlier. And, like the the god character. So I should have just brought this out the whole time. And you get the strategy guide. It tells you how to play it and uh, like all the mechanics, the co-op exclusives. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see what else is in here. Who are lockables? What? You can get Nega Scott? I didn't even know that. Apparently, I didn't do something. Beat, beat the story mode with Scott, Kim, Stills, and Ramona. So you gotta, you gotta beat a lot to do that. And you gotta, you gotta um, unlock knives by connecting your thing to a Ubisoft Connect account. So. Um, Yeah, and there's some other, like, stuff here. Apparently there's a boss rush mode. Survival horror. Yeah, there's, like, a level of zombies and stuff. So, I guess there's a mode for just that. Dodgeball mode. Okay, I do remember hearing about that. And battle royale. So, I guess you can battle each other and stuff. That's pretty cool. See, I didn't even know about half of this. Um, there's a little guide for, like, all the snacks and whatnot. So, you know, like, how, what you're leveling up. And it's got a little write-up here on uh, on it coming back and like the the story of that. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, it's like a really good uh, really good uh, like covering of the whole game there. Which is pretty cool. Uh, very neat. So yeah, just wanted to show that off. Overall, I love Scott Pilgrim. I love the game. I think it's really good. I think uh, if you haven't seen Scott Pilgrim the movie, you should go see that. If you haven't played the game, you should play that. If you haven't read the books, you should read those because those are awesome. Uh, probably get the colorized versions if you can, or like get them digitally colorized because that's uh, that's always nice. So yeah, I love Scott Pilgrim. Um, 
go go experience it. Go experience all of Scott Pilgrim. Because uh, we're not going to get probably any more. So, I love it. This game's great. Until next time, this has been Jay-Z NES saying keep it classic. Stick around for more reviews, underrated games. I'll see you guys in the next one. Jay-Z.